Hello everybody, welcome to day number 64. Today I wanted to do something a little bit differently. Um, I have some notes here. Usually I never use notes or anything and then when I say I'm going to, I just end up not looking at them. So we'll see how this goes. The reason I wanted to do this differently with notes is because so much has been coming through these last couple days that I want to share that I just didn't want to forget any of it. So. We'll see how it goes. Um, I just kind of want to empty out and share everything with you guys as you know, authentically as possible. The first thing I wrote down is that this 64 days of my what I've um, adopted from Kyle Cease called a self-connection experiment where you meditate every day for two hours and then like shoot a daily video like I've been doing. I've realized more than anything that this is a healing journey. When I first undertook this experiment, of course the mind thought all kinds of things about it like, oh, we're going to tap into higher consciousness and because we're going to do that, we're going to get all these things, right? We're going to be able to create all the, like a, 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 a newer, better reality or something. And while yes, that has truth to it, what I wasn't anticipating, and I'm not sure why, <laughs> but what I wasn't anticipating was the depth of the amount of healing that's taking place. When we go inwards, what I'm discovering, when, when we go inwards for long periods of time, every single day, for a long stretch of time, we go and find it all. We go, I've went and found like these heavenly celestial realms within me. And I've also found these really dark, like depths of hell within me too. I'm finding everything, the heaven and the hell within me. And it's interesting that when I find the heaven within me, you know, that is something that um, the mind likes to say, yes, meditation is working, right? But then when I go find the hell within me, that's when the mind can sometimes put up a little bit of a resistance and a little bit of like, I thought that meditation was, was so we could leave this behind. But what I'm experiencing more than ever is that the deeper we go in, or the, you could say the higher our consciousness rises, we don't leave the darkness behind. We, our relationship with it evolves. And every time I go into the darkness within me and stay there for a few days, like these last few days, I've had to face my darkness more intensely and more just like... Um, like more right in front of me than ever. Like it seems like seemed like these last few days, everything that could trigger up what I'm afraid of seeing in myself happened. Whether that was a certain person bringing something to me in a conversation, um, seeing something, just or maybe a dream, um, even in my meditations, things coming up. And it's so fascinating that going inward for these long periods for such a long time is you you really have to start seeing everything you're afraid of and there's no escaping it there's no turning from it the only thing to do is to give it an open embrace is to just open to it with this fearless embrace of it and and every time i do that i realize that you know, because when we open to it with a fearless embrace, what we're doing is we're opening to the fear within us, to the hell within us. We're opening to it with our spacious nature. And what we realize every single time is that our spacious nature is pure love. And pure love has the space for everything to dissolve in, for everything to exist within. Pure, our pure loving spacious nature has the has the capacity to bring everything within us to a state of harmony, to a state of balance. So every time I've gone, you know, another layer deeper into my darkness, initially there's a resistance there. Like, ah, I don't want to see that. I'm not meditating <laughs> so that I can see all my darkness. I'm meditating for the celestial realms, for the creativity, for the expansive love, right? For the connection. <laughs> The mind's like, I'm not meditating to integrate all this darkness. This is not what I thought this was. But it's so fascinating. Every time I go into the hell within me, the darkness within me, the terrifying, 
the things that I'm terrified of seeing in my own consciousness. Every time I go into that and I let go of the initial resistance and I open to it with my spacious and loving nature and it starts coming into balance, I leave the darkness with so much more of an appreciation for the journey into it. I leave the darkness seeing its value so much more clearly and having such a deeper, you know, relationship with it, a much more evolved relationship with it of not even really wanting to leave it behind anymore, kind of evolving out of that perspective of wanting to transcend the darkness and seeing how it is a part of me and how it will always be a part of me and how it is a beautiful part of me and how every time, you know, the celestial realms are beautiful to exist within the high, very high frequencies of love. Of course, we all know that. But here's the truth. I have been learning more from my darkness by, I don't even know, times 10 than I do when I'm in my higher heavenly states when I'm meditating. It's the darkness that has been teaching me more about myself than anything. Every time I go through a period of darkness, like these last two or three days, we'll say, I come out of that with so much more enriched with or enriched with knowledge and knowings of who I truly am. Because it shows me everything that I've been trying to hide from. It shows me the aspects of myself that I've tried to leave behind in my life or past lifetimes. It shows me the aspects of myself that are starved for love, that are starved for acceptance and to be seen. And that's a fascinating thing about this journey is it's more of a healing journey than anything. But of course it is, right? <laughs> it's funny how the mind or the, whatever you want to call it, the spiritual ego is like, no, this is a, <laughs> this is a, like Abraham Hicks would say, this is a movement to get tapped in, tuned in, turned on or whatever to source. And yes, that is true. That happens. But it's also like the hero's journey too, right? You're going into the darkness and you're bringing out you know, you're digging out the riches to share with not only yourself, but for everybody. So this is why I don't use notes because <laughs> I got to one thing I literally have. I'm not joking, you guys, like 35 things I wanted to share. And I, I have shared one thing and I'm eight minutes into the video. This is why this doesn't work. Um, I don't even know where to go from here, honestly, because there's just so much. Um, Okay, one thing I'm realizing is that my role in this ascension process is to guide people through the darkness, to guide you guys through the darkness. So that's why in these meditations, I'm going so deep into my darkness. It's because, and then I can share with you guys my darkness, and that helps you guys to feel safer in your darkness, right? And sometimes the spiritual ego in the mind comes up and says, we want a different role. <laughs> We don't want to be the guy who guides people through darkness. But from the very beginning of this, I, I've known that's who I am. And I know that it's so valuable for you guys to know what I go through. And, and so that's another realization I had yesterday. Sometimes the spiritual ego wants, you know, everything to look a certain way. And wants a, a certain type of lifestyle or whatever. But looking at where I've been, you know, the depths of hell I, I went through for at least the first five months or more of my awakening. And, you know, this, this last 64 days, especially, have just helped me realize, like, I'm here to guide people through the dark. So I'm just going to hit these last few notes as quick as possible to get through them. Um, it literally feels like when you're meditating, and you guys might be feeling this too, even if you're not meditating for as long as I am every day. It feels like the planet is being beamed with high frequency energy. And it's like you can feel the energy like burn. Like I've talked about this in a video, of course. You can feel the energy like burning away in your skull. And I think um, I've had comments about this too, like almost like that bruise sensation right through here. I've been having that. I've had it even today of just like overwhelming amounts of energy, right? But here's one thing I've really felt into. 
and my teacher Craig has talked about this, and, I, and, and I'm really feeling it myself, is that this energy, it can feel like almost like acid rain, right? If it's intense enough. But if you really feel into it, it's, it's just extremely intense bliss. It's just extremely intense bliss that the, you know, everything is adapting to. And that's kind of what it feels like. It feels like we're getting help and assistance from beings, higher um, consciousness beings, right? Surrounding our planet. And they're just like beaming high frequency energy into the planet. And it's so funny. I barely read anymore, but I'm reading this incredible sci-fi sci book called Star Maker. It's an amazing book. It's actually all about spiritual awakening. It was written in the 30s or 40s, um, 1930s or 40s. And it's a work of genius, probably the most creative thing ever written that I've ever read. And it, it talks about this and it's, <laughs> it's kind of a book about channeling and and it's just a, it's an incredible read and it mirrors what we're going through. And even though it's a sci-fi book, I feel like there's so much truth in it. And one of the things that happened is like high, um, more evolved beings would go to these planets that were really struggling and were about to um, annihilate themselves through basically um, just <laughs> stupidity <laughs> or just not being evolved enough. And these these higher evolved beings would go through and just like beam higher frequency energies and knowings into the planet, especially to individuals that were willing to be open conduits and channels for this energy. And it's just like, gosh, and I was watching a pod or listening to a podcast last night for the first time in a long time. And they were talking about UFO sightings. And I just was getting all these streams of goosebumps and shivers like, just like just so intensely and I was like okay there's something going on here we are all being assisted here this planet's being assisted right now because it, it needs to be um and so that that was one thing I wrote down it feels like there's like this so much energy being beamed down right now and with all of these higher frequencies coming into the planet um, that I've been talking about it is really helping us see like our older darkness so much more clearly and that is another reason why um, we've been all having to confront our darkness, right? It's been really in our face, all like the overwhelming dark. Th I'm sh I've been having so many dark thoughts that I just haven't had in a long time. And it's been really fascinating to, to watch these come up and to notice that I can now see how my mind manipu tries to manipulate or blackmail me more. You know, when I was a little kid, my mind would always, I had a, I've had a fearful mind my whole life, right? And then when I was a little kid, I, I didn't know how to deal with it consciously. And my mind would always blackmail me. It would say, if you step on this crack, your parents are going to die. If you, like parking spaces, if, if, if my, like sometimes if it had like certain numbers, I would tell my parents, don't park there, that's a bad space. And it was my mind blackmailing me with a superstitious belief of if you park there, you're all going to die. My, my mind would do this. My mind would literally say when I was <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff our mind does. My, when I was going up to bat and baseball, my mind would say, if you don't spin four times, something horrible is going to happen. So I would be there spinning four times. And I'm like, what's he doing? <laughs> like my mind was really, would really blackmail me when I was a kid. And I had really um, intense OCD symptoms, right? And so it's been interesting as these frequencies have gotten so high on planet Earth recently and it's bringing up all the old patterns, how much my mind has been freaking out and all those patterns from childhood are coming up and they're trying to blackmail or they're trying to do the same thing. And so I'm watching them play out and I'm watching how the controlling nature of the mind is really surfacing and how the mind is really having its, having its tantrums recently. And that's why it's been really hard to be in the heart um, because the mind has just been so overactive. I, maybe you guys are experiencing this too with all these higher frequencies. It's really creating an overactive, overbearing, and controlling mind. Um, today, I feel way better. I feel way more in my heart space. So this does pass. And these are just temporary periods where we are you know, going through that purge cycle like I, I talked about yesterday. So... I just wanted to throw that out there that my mind's superstitious and blackmailing tendencies have really been surfacing. The key to do this is to just open to it and be like, I love you. You're safe. That's fine if you want to try to blackmail me, but just see that it's not you and don't push it away. Don't suppress it. Um, don't, don't hate it. Just, just like I was saying earlier, 
open into your spacious and loving nature and allow all the blackmails and the superstitious threats and all the OCD stuff, allow it to just come up because it, it needs to come up to be seen. Right now, the theme is facing our own darkness. To face our own darkness, because when we face our own darkness with a space of love, we come into harmony. And the last thing I will leave you guys with is this whole challenge initially was always about becoming. What am I going to become in a hundred days of meditating every day for two hours, right? And I would, the mind would say, you know, in a hundred days, we're going to have this level of consciousness. And with this level of consciousness, we're going to be this person. Or I would compare to other people. It'd be like, maybe my level of consciousness can be somewhere close to this person's consciousness if I do this meditation, right? It would just kind of do those things. And that was fine to get the ball rolling and get started, you know, this journey about trying to become something. And truthfully, that is gone. Like, I don't ever think hardly anymore of like what I'm going to become through meditating for two hours, like for like these last 35 days. Now it's just about, there's nothing to become. It's just all right now. And I think this is because in the first, I would say month or so, maybe even 40 days, I would feel a really big and pronounced difference before I meditated and after I meditated. It was basically like I put on like a superhero suit or something for two hours and then afterwards I was like so much more aware and so much more dialed in, right? And, and so I just was like, oh my gosh, what am I becoming? Because if I keep doing this, you know, the consciousness is just gonna keep expanding, awareness is gonna keep expanding and this is like a superhero power is, or is what it felt like. So the mind was always obsessed with, if I keep doing this, what am I gonna become? But now, truthfully, I don't feel that big of a difference from medit from the you know early in the day to after I'm done with my two hours of meditation. Um, it's more of just a part of me now, and that because it's more of a part of me now, I don't feel necessarily like I'm becoming something. Um, I feel like I already am the something that I want to become, and then now, now it's just about deepening into the I am, you know, and. The, I think that's a sign that something has fallen away. That, and that's the other thing I want to leave you with. You don't realize what falls away because it doesn't come up anymore. Like, the things I was thinking about in the first, whatever, 30, 40, 50 days, a lot of old selves have fallen away that I don't even know they've fallen away because if I was able to see that they had fallen away, I would still be inhabiting that older self. You see what I mean? But because that older self is just completely gone, I can't even see from that perspective anymore. I can't compare anymore from where I was to where I am now because I can't even access that level of consciousness that I was operating from because it's just gone. Now I'm at this level of consciousness. This level of consciousness says there's nothing to become. A month ago, I was at a level of consciousness that said there's something to become. That's been a huge difference from something to become to I am the thing, like there's nothing to become anymore. It's just about deepening into what I already am. So that's basically what I have written down. Um, kind of, I didn't, <laughs> this video probably got really long by now. Um, oh, I guess I'll say this too. <laughs> I miss the silence when I'm away from the silence. That's a big thing. When I'm away from the silence for too long, I start missing it. Um, and it's just like this real deep relationship I have with the silence. Um, and yesterday when I was listening to a podcast for the first time in a long time, I couldn't listen as long because it was like taking me from the silence. And I felt like the podcast wasn't giving me as much valuable information, even though it was cool, it was talking about UFOs. It still wasn't giving me as much valuable information as the silence was. And I was like, I would rather listen to the silence right now than anything. And it felt good to just kind of go back into the silence. And also while I was listening to the podcast, I found that my ability to filter the information about what the people were saying was so incredibly efficient. Like I could just feel what was true and like, cool, I'll take that. And then I could just feel what was false immediately and be like, I could feel, I could feel in their tone and from where they were speaking, if they were speaking from a place of truth and what they knew, or if they were speaking from a place of you know, somewhere they were not, um, that wasn't true. I think, I think listening to the silence is really helpful to help us um, 
grow our wisdom and our discernment of the information we're taking in. And we can just let the stuff land that is, we feels true. And if it doesn't feel true, it can just it just goes by. And that's what I was doing with the podcast, just so effortlessly, like, oh, that's true. And then like, oh, that's not. And um, no judgment, just like, it really helped me to just filter through stuff. And, and I think I'm doing that more and more in daily life, too. So it's really exciting. Lots of fun things happening within lots of, <laughs> you know, when we face our own darkness, it's not fun, but it's super valuable. So that's what I'm here to do is to share, share how I walk through my darkness. And hopefully that helps you guys walk through your darkness. So I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Day 64. Namaste.